passion for research is contagious. It's also a team thing. It's not just me, it's also a student working with another student. If you are going and exploring new territory, sometimes things don't work the way you want it. Because nobody knows the answer. You have to drive through the rough periods where there's no clarity to get to the point where there's clarity. I've had a number of experiences where I have stared at a line of code and I have known exactly where the mistake is. It was right, it was absolutely right. I could not figure out what was wrong. You can actually stare at something for an, an eternity and not be able to figure out what's wrong. Experiments can fail. Your idea might be a wrong idea. You might be spending days, weeks, or months doing something that eventually would not work. If every time you set out to do something, it happened right away, you'd quickly get bored with it and move on to something else. It's setting yourself a new challenge that has to be overcome and then figuring out how to do that, that's really what's exciting. I think you just have to be tenacious. You have to be unwavering. You have to want to pursue ideas at the highest level. At the Schaefer School of Engineering and Science, we create a community of scholars, students working with faculty on problems of national and international significance. That's what we do. The faculty who come to Stevens understand our legacy. They understand full well our interest in pursuing research and education that is gonna benefit the world. And it goes back to the founding family. Recently, I had an opportunity to look at the letters that the founding president of Stevens, Henry Morton, was sending around the United States to potential faculty. He went to great lengths in many of his letters to say, yes, we value theory, but we want practical ideas. We want to put them into practice for the benefit of the nation. Well, from the founding of the Institute has been a vision of developing leaders, you know, Stevens calls itself the Innovation University and within the School of Engineering Science, the Schaefer School, we take this very seriously. It's rigorous. You have to learn a lot of theory, but engineering is applying science and technology to solving problems. There's real world problems that aren't solved. There's no textbook, there's no question with an answer. It's my belief that the only way to deal with these challenges to continue investing into research and innovation. The main project I'm working on right now is my senior design project. The idea is to try to extract the waste heat from a solar panel so that the panel can operate at a higher efficiency. I'm actually working on the heavy lift cargo plane. We have to design an airplane, um, remote controlled, to take off in 200 feet and land in 400 feet while doing one loop in the air. The ASV. Uh, which it stands for Autonomous Surface Vehicle, uh, basically a robo-boat. The boat has to, by itself, through artificial intelligence and machine learning, go through a series of challenges. Uh, this could be a vessel, for example, that would navigate around a harbor for port security purposes. And, and this project involves students from mechanical engineering, ocean engineering, and computer science. Our plane is going to be 10 pounds, hopefully lifting 45 pounds. So it would be a really good heavy lift cargo plane for military or even just commercial airliner. Specifically, I'm the head computer engineer. I'll be working on the artificial intelligence, the machine learning. There's a special kind of collaboration that has to happen between me and the team. Between the eight of us, we all have to work together. When students work across disciplines, what happens is it, it accelerates learning so that students are learning not only core principles in their area of focus, but they're understanding the implications of their research on other disciplines. And what we're doing at Stevens is we're looking at multiple points of view in engineering, but with real serious social implications. I would have never thought of the final concept that we came up with. So working with people that I've never met before, they have different thoughts and different designs. You're representing the school, you're representing your own talents, you're working with many different disciplines, uh, something outside your comfort zone. There are huge hurdles to overcome with solar technology. This is a piece that my group and I can tackle with the engineering knowledge that we have thus far, and I think that's really empowering. Alternate energy is reaching a point where it's now starting to be competitive, and we have 
projects that students can undertake within their technical coursework that address sustainability and certainly in the energy sphere, that's, that's quite profound. We just completed a two-year research project. We had to build a highly affordable but very advanced zero energy house for a woman in the seventh ward of Washington, D.C. through Habitat for Humanity and through the Solar Decathlon, which is a Department of Energy initiative. The Solar Decathlon project was a great success, I believe, in large part because of a, uh, of a unique program here at Stevens that we call Product Architecture, um, which takes students and teaches them the concept of design from a systems perspective. The mechanical engineers in their work had to rely on information from the electrical engineers who had to rely on information from the architects and who had to rely on information from the carpenters. So that it was a complete synthesis of house building, architecture, mechanical engineering, structural engineering, and electrical engineering. It was nothing short of transformational on campus. We had something like 40 students involved, from freshmen to almost completing their PhD. We had faculty from all different disciplines. As we were working on the Zero Energy House, we started to realize that there were different avenues that we could pursue. So that two-year endeavor spawned three more research projects. A second Zero Energy House in the Hoboken area, a house in Haiti, post-disaster, 10-house prototypical community, and then we're also developing a forward operating base prototype for 100 soldiers for the Department of Defense, all using the same research from the same group of students. It's not enough to come in and just do lectures, science, mathematics, engineering. We want our students, when they first come to school, to see what it is that engineers do. My legacy is going to be the students that I taught. And to see them do well, to go out and do well based on their experience here, is the most rewarding thing. My belief is that the human mind is built for discovery. And when students come to my group, they are learning how to use this ability. I absolutely rely upon the students to, to push the research forward. We want that research to inspire and inform everything that goes on in the classroom. And we want those students to be inspired by what they're hearing. So I often say the, the students do not come here to learn from a professor who's reading from a book. They come here to learn from the professor who wrote the book.